right. Um, end your life. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for HU's virtual webinar series. My name is Laurie Barrow. I am the uh, Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Harrisburg University. Um, we're really excited to have some special guests with us today. Before I introduce them, just want to go over a few things about the content of the webinar and how this will work. Um, today's webinar is about our Integrative Sciences program at HU. Um, within that program, there's a bunch of concentrations. The ones we're going to be focusing on today are biology, chemistry, and biological chemistry. Uh, we also have our pre-med uh, advisor and subject matter expert here with us for those who are interested in going on to med school or vet school or pharmacy school. Um, other types of questions regarding financial aid, housing, scholarships, tuition won't be covered in today's webinar, but we do have some pre-recorded webinars and I'll provide that email address in the Q&A section for those who want to go and check those out. Um, everyone is on mute, but we want to hear from you. This is a definitely an interactive session. We are going to have a great presentation from our uh, distinguished faculty here today, but there is a Q&A section. So I'm, whether you're on a laptop or mobile, it might look a little bit different, but there's a question mark and it looks like a little chat box. That's where we want you to ask any and all questions that you have. If you hear them speaking and something piques your interest, go ahead and ask a question. Um, at the end, we will have Q&A for maybe the last 15 minutes or so, and I'll be reading those out loud to the audience, and we'll be having our, our guests answer them as appropriate. So let me go ahead and introduce our guests today. From our Integrative Sciences Department, we have Dr. Catherine Santai, who is the Associate Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry and the Program Lead for the Integrative Sciences Program. We also have Dr. Richard Jackson, who is an Associate Professor of Integrative Sciences and also our Pre-Med Advisor. And last but not least, we have Dr. Rachel Fogel, who is an Associate Professor of Biological Sciences and also manages our aquaponics. So if you don't know what aquaponics is, please ask that. She would love to talk more about that. <laughs> so with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our main speaker of the afternoon, Dr. Katherine Santai. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kathy Santai, and I'm going to give you a little introduction today about integrative sciences. So give me two seconds here so that I can shift and you can see my little presentation. And I'm going to put it in presentation mode. And so now hopefully you can see um, my little title slide. The first thing I want to tell you about integrative sciences is that we really do, in terms of faculty composition, um, live up the name, live up to the name of integrative sciences. We have a variety of faculty. You can see here on the right hand side the long list of names with lots of lovely little letters after their names. Um, we have uh, faculty who have expertise from things as diverse as quantum mechanics to proteomics to forensic entomology to forensic toxicology and even a um, medical practitioner, um, Dr. Jackson, who's also on our panel today. And so let's talk a little bit about what the curriculum in integrative sciences looks like. We have a core um, within our curriculum, so it doesn't matter what specific um, sub-discipline or concentration you ultimately want to study, everybody gets the same foundation. A foundation that includes mathematics, um, statistics, and up to and including calculus one. Physics, uh, one semester of it with laboratory hands-on experience. Uh, chemistry one semester as well, and biology one semester as well. Um, all of those three, um, physics, chem, and bio, bio with laboratory experiences. We do this because we understand and appreciate how important it is for scientists to be able to talk across disciplines, not just being um, well-versed in chemistry and then unable to talk to a biologist about problems that cross barriers. So this way, all of our students get foundations 
um, and they can speak across all four of these major disciplines in science. Once they then ga gather that foundational um, knowledge, we then allow them to concentrate and they can concentrate in either forensic biology, biochemistry, or chemistry. Um, and the nice thing about having a core to our curriculum is if a student comes in and says, oh, absolutely, I want to do biology, um, for example, that's a, generally an 18 year old freshman, um, you know, first experiencing college student. And even if you don't meet those specific criteria, it's your first time in college and you may end up taking a physics class or a mathematics class or a chemistry class one like I teach and you just love it and you decide after your first year or your third semester or whatever it is that you want to change and no longer follow that path in biology but now you want to do chemistry or biochemistry or whatever. The fact that all of our students take this core set of courses means and allows our students to change what they want their area of focus or concentration to be without losing time towards graduation. That's a really important piece. Oftentimes you need to be very careful what you declare when you first come into college because making changes later on then mean you have to stay in college longer. So our, our program having this core set of coursework and foundational knowledge allows you a little bit of leeway to change your mind, which can oftentimes be a real positive. And so what I wanted to do now was go through a couple of highlights from each of our four different um, concentrations. Um, we will have another session and our uh, Director of Undergraduate Education will point you to that if you're so interested in forensic science. But I just want to highlight here um, some of the internship opportunities we offer to students who are interested in forensics. We've had students do internships at the Dauphin County Coroner's Office. Why? Because the um, coroner is actually a, a faculty member with us and teaches classes regularly at um, HU. Um, other uh, police departments, um, the police bureau, we've had students do projects on things like different serological techniques when you're trying to identify blood and bodily fluids. Um, doing forensic profiling um, to forensic anthropology and facial reconstruction. And you can see there on the right hand side a variety of different career possibilities that can stem from concentrating in forensic science. Same thing for biology. We have a variety of different internship and research opportunities that our students have uh, taken advantage of. We've had students, especially ones that are interested more in the medical field, um, where they've gone to work as interns, as scribes at the Penn State Medical Center or the Hershey Medical Center. We've had um, them working in uh, family practices, shadowing um, physicians or surgeons um, in, in hospitals. Um, we've had them work at the Whitaker Science Center, which is literally a block away from our main building in Harrisburg. Um, where they can work with young children and helping to teach them um, to love and want to explore um, a, a career in science. Um, research opportunities for um, undergraduates, um, they've had those opportunities um, awarded to them at ex outside or external institutions as well. Um, a variety of research opportunities even on campus at HU. Um, looking at different types of aggressive behaviors that fish can exhibit when exposed to different colors, surprisingly. Um, looking how um, bedding composition can vary um, in terms of what medium you're asking your plants to grow in, and that's done within our aquaponics um, research facility that Dr. Fogel is here um, to speak to you more about if you're so interested. Um, we've done a lot of studies looking at um, exotic as well as um, plants that you find locally here, doing extractions of key components from them and then looking to see can they replace antibiotics? Does the method of extraction affect its ability to be an effective antibiotic? Um, and things even looking at behavior differences between um, different species and subspecies of insects. <clears throat> and of course they're on the right hand side biology, you can see there are many different possibilities for what you can do 
with a degree or concentration in biology. Biochemistry, um, some of the research or internship opportunities that students have taken advantage of. Um, Eurofins Laboratory, um, which is a huge facility in Lancaster. We've placed many students there um, as interns for a semester, for a summer, for one, two years. We've had many students transition to full-time jobs there post their internship experience. Um, GI Supply, Hershey Botanical Gardens, um, Sullivan Heights uh, Science Charter School, the Schuylkill County Conservation District, um, as well as Pavone, um, lots of uh, somewhat local um, companies they've been able to get their experiences at. Um, as well, we've looked at uh, climate change and ability of a particular organism found and located in um, deep, very cold waters off the coast of Japan. We um, got a hold of that organism and started to study its ability to adapt to thermal stress like would be found in um, climate change or be occurring during climate change or global warming. Um, we've looked at effectiveness of different um, plant oils on the ability to kill bacteria. We've looked at um, microplastics and their prevalence now in water bodies. Um, does that actually have any implication or harm that would come to say embryo development in fish? Um, and we've looked at things like um, the wall and how it grows and builds um, in specific organisms like Myxococcus. And again, you can see on the right-hand side there, a variety of different career opportunities that are afforded to a student who chooses to study biochemistry. And last but not least, um, internship opportunities um, in chemistry. Um, we have a chemical company that's a little bit more of a walk, but definitely within walking distance um, from our Harrisburg campus called Chemical Solutions. They specialize in metal testing, in forensic samples, drug samples, and food samples. Um, <coughs> pardon me, Roberta Flavors, which is in New Jersey. We've had students um, that's around where their hometown is. Student did the internship, got offered a job. Um, all kinds of good things can happen from uh, internships if you expand your horizons a little bit. Advanced Research Photonics is another uh, local startup company um, that developed an instrument called a terahertz spectrophotometer and has given students the opportunity to develop methods, to um, follow up on research questions, and write and publish papers um, as part of their internship. Um, within HU, some of the research opportunities students have been afforded is looking at problems um, in the environment, like uh, acid drainage coming out of coal mines, which is a big problem in Pennsylvania, and looking to see in local uh, regions, such as in Schuylkill County, in the upper Swatara Creek watershed, to see how those waters, whether they are still impacted, whether they're recovering, and making recommendations to the community and other organizations as to how to best proceed in continuing their cleanup. Um, we've had a, a chemistry student also look at developing a, a method for detecting in urine um, whether a individual is uh, abusing methadone. <coughs> we've also had a student look at low field NMR, which is utilizing one of our newest pieces of instrumentation in order to determine whether or not diesel fuel has been adulterated, which of course is not generally something we as consumers want to have in our um, fuel sources. And of course, a variety of um, career opportunities here in both science, the environment, as well as law and policy. And what all of those different um, research opportunities, internship opportunities um, that we provide, we provide even more opportunities beyond that. And I thought I would give you just a, a visual collage, if you will, to highlight some of those. If you look on the left hand corner there in the image that you see, Uh, let's do my laser pointer. Yeah, let's look over here in the right hand corner. What you can see are um, two current undergraduates and they do a lot of STEM outreach as well as a variety of other um, students from the sciences as well as outside of the sciences. They travel to uh, local middle schools, elementary schools, and even high schools in order to provide hands-on um, activities for students 
so they can better understand what STEM really is and encourage them to careers in those fields. Um, if you look here in the center here, this is a um, previous uh, undergraduate student who's graduated. She went to um, the Harrisburg Capitol and she participated in their undergraduate research day at the Capitol. And you can see her here presenting her research to one of the senators or congressmen that were present. <clears throat> we also have a variety of research opportunities beyond just completing your work at HU for really exceptional students. Um, we take them to um, scientific conferences like the Pennsylvania Academy of Science, which has an annual research conference, as well as the Society of Women Environmental Professionals. They have an annual research conference, the American Chemical Society, a bunch of different external professional societies that we've um, had the ability to take students to. And we can even see some of our distinguished faculty, right, who are able to um, accompany the students. They've been able to do things like poster presentations, oral presentations, and we've even had students win awards um, for their oral and poster presentations. This is not just giving students the opportunity to succeed and achieve accolades within our building, within our walls, but also among the larger scientific community. Down here, we see an example of a recent graduate as well. She won an award for outstanding achievement in chemistry. That's given by the American Chemical Society. So that's a regional um, award within our state um, that was given. Um, as well, you can see in the lower right hand corner just how collaborative um, our faculty and student relationships are. What I hope you can see there are um, one of our undergraduate students, in this case, she's working with a professor, Dr. Proctor, and they're working on research. And the student collected some really interesting data that crossed uh, disciplines and crossed boundaries. And faculty from other disciplines, including environmental science, are willing to step in, help the students analyze, right? And this was actually being done in my office at that very time. And we can help them and support them then to take the results out to external societies and the larger scientific community as a whole. So outreach opportunities, um, presentation of undergraduate research opportunities, awards, and faculty-student close collaboration are all some of the just a few of the opportunities that we provide students at Harrisburg University. And so if I'm going to talk about research, the thing you want to realize with research is it's not just going in the lab, mixing two things together and looking to see what comes out, right? We're not doing kitchen science. What we as a university have invested in is a tremendous amount of instrumentation and facilities to support our student research efforts. Um, and what we do as an organization, in particular as a program, is we go and we speak to um, companies in the area, graduate schools, um, all kinds of scientific societies, and we try to get a gauge for, well, what kind of instrumentation do our students need to use? Will they be expected to use in graduate school in, as technicians or in the workforce? And that has driven us to invest a very large amount of money, right, in um, acquiring this sophisticated equipment. For example, one of our uh, most recent acquisitions is a nuclear magnetic resonance thermometer. Um, this is on the order of $65,000, not a small investment, certainly not required at an undergraduate institution, but we know this is beneficial to our students. Um, having things like atomic spectrometers helps get students jobs at places like chemical solutions and the alike. And you can see the list of all the different instrumentations that we have here. In addition to instrumentation, um, which we've invested again over a quarter of a million dollars in probably the last five years, we also have a variety of research facilities. Um, Dr. Rachel Fogel is here today to answer any questions you have about our two aquaponics facilities um, and the really interesting um, and diverse types of research that can be done there. We also, um, in a move towards being able to do studies on vertebrates, um, we've recently acquired a, um, 
aquatic system that allows us to research on fish. Um, we also have a microscope imaging facility with a variety of different microscopes, light, um, inverted fluorescence, polarizing, for example, that allow us to look at things um, much, much smaller um, than what our naked eye can detect. Um, and <clears throat> lastly, another one of the key highlights is we have the ability for our students to um, do studies on organisms and on uh, cells, including human cells, that are a little bit more hazardous than what you generally find out in the, in the environment. They rank those different um, organisms that you can work with according to their biosafety level. Biosafety level one is the lowest. We can do biosafety level one and two um, type of organisms for study. Lots and lots of research opportunities, but not everybody wants to do um, research or go straight out into the workforce. There are a lot of students who want to do even more schooling and they want to go on to a professional school. Um, you're not going to find um, at our undergraduate institution or any others um, the ability to major in pre-med or major in pre-pharmacy. It is a focus that you have that your advisor um, helps you with but you need to have a particular undergraduate area of study or focus. Biology, biochemistry, biotechnology, these are really common um, areas of study um, for students who want to go on to professional schools, um, but really you can study anything at the undergraduate level. And it's really up to um, your advising um, to help direct you to those courses that are required in order for students to be able to qualify for the admissions exams, as well as ultimately be accepted into those respective schools. Some of the things that we offer, like I just mentioned, we have specialized advising and um, Dr. Rick Jackson is here um, and he is one of our specialized advisors specifically for students interested in medicine. <clears throat> and that specialized advising encourages students to focus on math preparation, um, before they enter college and really focus on it in their freshman year so that they can um, get into um, general chemistry as early as possible, ideally the freshman year. We have a health career society. Um, this meets several times a semester in which um, those uh, the society advisors bring in guest speakers who are medical professionals, pharmacy professionals, uh, researchers, the alike. Um, to give advice um, for students who are interested in applying to professional schools. We've also taken students on trips to professional schools um, in order to tour um, the facilities at those local schools and find out what they have in terms of opportunities, what's really required for a mission. Um, we have a uh, MCAT review classes that we offer regularly. The MCAT is the Medical College Admission Test. We have a lot of students who are interested in MCAT specifically, or medical college specifically, and that admission test is particularly challenging and oftentimes be a hurdle that's difficult to mount in a student's quest to become a medical professional. And so to support students, um, we don't have any particular charge for it, but we do offer review classes weekly to help students in their preparation beyond just the coursework that they take at our university. Um, we also specifically target how we offer our coursework. Um, we have an intensive organic chemistry course that we offer in the summer that students are welcome to take advantage of. Oftentimes they would do that in their sophomore year or between their sophomore and junior year in order to better prepare them for the MCAT and taking that um, test um, junior, uh, the summer after their junior year or the summer after their senior year. And so I've said a lot of things, but oftentimes it really boils down to why should you choose to study science at all at Harrisburg University? And I think it comes down to these few bullet points as the things to really take home and remember. One is that we offer a core set of courses in both science and mathematics to help you prepare for study in any of the different four sub-disciplines forensics, chemistry, biochemistry, biology. That gives you flexibility to change your mind and really then focus your study on what you really love and what you're really passionate about. 
second major point is that we have excellent instrumentation, instrumentation that employers and graduate schools use. This is the instrumentation that we're not going to say, here, watch us use it, but rather we're going to say, no, 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 you step right up here, put your hands on the instrument, and let's do an experiment with it. You're going to get hands on experience so that on your resume, you're going to be able to say, yes, not only do I know what that name is, but I know how to use that instrument, and that's key in getting jobs. Three. It's well known that if a student is able to secure an internship, they're much more likely to be offered a job at that particular institution or company. We know that. And rather than saying, oh, we hope you get an internship and we know it improves outcomes in terms of getting a job, we require our students to get internships. Every student must complete at minimum one internship. <clears throat> As well, it's also been well studied. It is known that research experiences help students discern whether or not they want to pursue a career in research. And it really helps them um, hone in and um, develop their scientific curiosity. So again, we're not just saying, oh, well, we know that that's a positive indicator for success in science. We require our students to do two semesters of research. We also offer very well-trained faculty, and you saw on the very first slide, um, the list of all the faculty that we have contributing to our program. Um, these are full-time faculty that were listed at the onset and that I have here presenting and available to answer questions with me today. We also have a large number of what we call corporate faculty who come to us directly from the work and they teach one or maybe two classes at our university and they provide their um, job related expertise. This is particularly important in forensics um, as well as chemistry. And we have those faculty as well um, teaching our classes. And the last thing, I don't think I can emphasize this enough is small class size. We have a cap on our classes, all of our classes at Harrisburg University, which is 24 students. Because again, the research shows that the smaller the number of students in a class, the more likely a student is to be engaged, to speak up, to participate, and the better the overall grades and outcomes for students in general in smaller classes. We have a commitment to that. And this is why we have a small class size. Your child or your student will not come here and be part of a 200 person lecture where they're not really seen as an individual. Our small class sizes ensure that they get personalized attention. And so all of these good reasons to come to our university and get an undergraduate education at Harrisburg University, it's really important to see those as um, setting a student up for achieving their goals. And we have a large number of our students who are interested in going directly out into the workforce with their undergraduate degree. And so if you look to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, you find for biological and chemical technicians, as well as life and physical science technicians, um, a lot of data um, in regards to salaries. Um, and we, I pulled off the most recent data available, which is from uh, 2009, or excuse me, 2019. And across the nation um, of the US, we're looking at salaries uh, a little over 52,000 a year um, to work as a technician in the physical or life sciences. Um, across the state, that average salary is really comparable. Um, when you look in our local area, if a student is looking to stay within Harrisburg or Carlisle area, um, that salary is slightly diminished, right? You're between 42 and 47,000 um, a year, but you have to consider it's a lower cost of living as well. So that really good salary can go quite a long ways. So, okay, we know those are the statistics associated with students if they get a job, but do the students from Harrisburg University do that? Where do our Harrisburg University graduates, where do they actually go? And so what I've done is I've highlighted a couple 
of um, recent hires. So for example, our student Ashley, she's a 2020 graduate. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, she uh, majored in chemistry and biochemistry. She was a, a double concentration. And before she graduated, she was interviewing at a variety of different um, employers and ultimately accepted a position with Procter & Gamble in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Um, and she made some comments when she told me about her um, job search. Um, when she was interviewed, they said they were really impressed with how much instrument, instrument experience she had because compared to so many other applicants they were interviewing, they didn't see them having that same skill set. Again, another one of the major reasons why we really put a lot of money investment and time investment in our students learning these hands-on instrument and technical skills. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and she was actually, um, after she was accepted um, for the job, they allowed her to just pick. Do you want to go in biology or chemistry? Pick these if you want because she had such a diverse skill set that she could really go anywhere. Ultimately, she ended up choosing to be a chemist one for Procter & Gamble. Elena is another student um, who recently, 2020 graduate, um, with her focus of study being in chemistry. Um, she did an internship at this company called Fenner Precision in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, which was a little bit closer to where um, she, she's from. Um, I had never heard of the company. They um, manufacture rubber, silicone, polyurethane, a variety of different cured and uncured products, as well as fabrics. Um, she had her internship here. They loved her in her internship. She continued to work for them part time until ultimately they offered her a full time job. Um, she's now a chemist one at Fenner Precision. Both of these students have already started working. Um, Carrie is a student um, we had graduate with a degree in biochemistry. She now works at GI Supply, that's local here um, in Mechanicsburg, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. And she's a clean room technician for this company that makes um, medical grade tattoo ink um, for physicians and surgeons to use during surgical procedures. She also works part-time um, back at HU as a laboratory instructor in our biology laboratories. Tamara was a biology student. She graduated last year, just the same way Carrie did. Um, she's now a research specialist in necroscopy, um, <clears throat> pardon me, at Charles River Laboratories located at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. She also works part-time as a substitute teacher in Washington, D.C. schools. What else have they done? Have students done things just beyond getting jobs? Yes. We've had our HU graduates go on to graduate school. So one um, student to highlight is Micah, who um, concentrated in biochemistry in his time at Harrisburg University. He was a very successful student. He was the first student at Harrisburg University to be awarded an American Chemical Society Scholar Scholarship, which um, provided him money and internship opportunities to. Um, improve the likelihood of him going on into graduate or other studies in chemistry. Um, he applied to a variety of different um, PhD programs um, across the US. He was accepted at all of them, but um, he ultimately made the choice to um, begin his PhD studies um, in the Department of Molecular Biology at Princeton University. He was given a full fellowship. Um, a fellowship is um, really similar to a scholarship, so they pay for all of his um, education fees, as well as they pay for his um, housing, living, medical um, insurance. Um, and so he was being paid to go to school about $37,000 a year. And I also included the picture here because um, Beings that we um, have small class sizes, we also get to know our students really well. And Micah is one of seven children in a very large family. And you can see him with some of his family members. Um, he's the first one in his family to go on to graduate studies. And as you can see here, the family was super duper proud of him. Um, Caitlin um, is a graduate, uh, 2020 graduate as well. She uh, double concentrated in biology and forensics. 
um, and she was recently accepted into Thomas Jefferson University's master's program, um, where she'll be a student studying forensic toxicology. Where else do our students go? Um, this is another example um, when you look here to Tierra. This is a student who really um, lived that experience of integrating the different disciplines of science. She came in as a forensic, um, as her planned major or concentration of study. She ended up switching to biochemistry. Um, she graduated top of her class um, in biochemistry. She did some interesting research um, on how to detect um, for methadone abuse and went to the Pennsylvania Academy of Science and presented that. Um, and then after school, she went to graduate um, studies, a master's program at George Washington University um, and recently graduated with her master's in forensic toxicology. And she's now employed as a forensic toxicologist in the office of the chief medical examiner in Washington, DC. So she crafted a path through HU in biochemistry that led her to a really cross-disciplinary job in forensics. Um, speaking of professional opportunities um, and professional school opportunities, more specifically, uh, Leah and Maya are just two examples of students who moved on into professional studies. Leah is a 2020 graduate as well. Um, who concentrated in biology, <clears throat> and she's accepted as a master's student in the physician assistant program at the Pennsylvania College of Technology, which is uh, affiliated with Penn State. <coughs> Pardon me. Maya was a student who focused on chemistry in her studies here. She sort of bounced around a lot, wasn't sure if she wanted to do chemistry or biology, and then ultimately when she finished, she decided, you know, I want to go um, to pharmacy school. And she was accepted into an accelerated program at the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, um, <clears throat> where she's currently a, um, working on her doctorate in pharmacy. And she had lots of really positive things to say about her undergraduate research experience and her ability to present her research to um, members of the government at the Pennsylvania Capitol as <clears throat> really influencing and supporting her development to this career path in pharmacy. And so that sort of wraps up my highlights of the Integrative Science Program. And I will um, shoot back to Laurie, our Director of Undergraduate Admissions, to field any questions. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Santai. That was wonderful. I especially liked hearing um, all the different stories about our students and graduates and, and what they've gone on to do. And I think that you really did a great job of showing just how diverse um, the opportunities are in this field and what students can study and different paths they can take. So really nice stuff. Um, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So. Um, <laughs> Just a few more minutes here. I mean, we can certainly go a little bit longer if folks want to stay on. We do have some good questions here for you. Um, some of these may have been answered, but I'm going to try to narrow them down a little bit. The first one I'm going to address, though, is one I'm going to answer. Is, is there a link that I can go to that focuses on the forensics concentration? And what I'm going to tell you is this. Um, you have a couple different things that you can do. Um, we do have a presentation going this Friday specifically for forensics. So if you're interested in forensics or you're thinking about forensics in addition to biology or chemistry, you can go ahead and register for that. The link is right here on the screen. You should have also gotten an email about this and everybody will get another email about this on Thursday if they have not registered yet. That would be my best recommendation for you to learn as much as you want to know about forensics. Um, there's some other questions about other uh, things we've already talked about. Um, you can also go on to this email address here to see other pre-recorded webinars and other majors that we've had as well as financial aid and student services. 
Last thing, um, if you want some more information about any of these concentration within the Integrative Sciences program, we can't really mail right now due to the current virtual situation, but email us at undergraduate admissions at harrisburgu.edu and we will absolutely get you whatever we can get you or get you in contact with faculty members. You'd be glad to speak with you either live like this or via email. Okay, so back to some of our questions here. Um, we have a question. I'm going to give this one out to Dr. Santai. It asked, um, can you be a dual degree in forensic science and biology? Is that a possibility? Absolutely, yes. Okay, well, good. All right. <laughs> that was easy enough. Um, I'm going to give uh, this question to um, give this to Dr. Uh, Fogel. Um, Dr. Fogel, how, in your opinion, how likely is it for a student to get a job right after graduating? And do the internships help with getting a job? I think Dr. Santai answered that a little bit, but in your opinion, is it difficult for students to get employed right after they graduate with a bachelor's degree? So no, I think I think everything that HU does with experiential learning um, and our career services office um, that that we really do as much as what we can to help um, build professional networking for students to have a, a higher likelihood of placement um, after matriculation. I, I do not know percentages uh, to speak of, but I know that a high number of our students have placements um, in offers as a result of their internships. Um, and then in addition to that, a lot of other uh, interviews and, and opportunities are also available outside of those internship experiences. Thank you, wonderful. And actually, uh, there is a pre-recorded webinar about experiential learning and career services on the link that I provided earlier. So if you wanna check more uh, out about that, go ahead and do that. Um, next questions are for Dr. Jackson. Um, Dr. Jackson, we have a lot of questions, like a ton of questions about med school and veterinary school and pharmacy school. Um, you probably could talk about it all day, but we don't have all day. Um, but can you give these students kind of your best advice of what they should be doing once they start school and what they should focus on in order to become uh, eligible and successful in, in that pathway? Um, sure. Um, I at, at, at HU, we uh, encourage the students who come in thinking they want to go into a pre-professional program to keep their options open, to not focus too quickly that, yes, I'm going to, let's say, pharmacy school. Maybe as they go through the four years, they'll realize they want to do uh, medicine or nursing or physician's assistant. So that's one thing I would say. The other thing I would say is just be prepared to work hard. Um, I can tell you from my experience when I was an undergrad, if I wasn't uh, sleeping or working, I was probably studying. Uh, and so I think they sort of in preparation for college or university, they just need to get that into their mind that they're gonna be studying almost all the time. Um, and as we said, uh, especially for our pre-professional students, uh, as you're getting ready to go to uh, college, it doesn't matter if it's HU or not, although we want you to come to HU, uh, really make sure your math skills are good because um, uh, chemistry and biology, physics, they all rest on math. And if you aren't, if, if you can't do the math, you're gonna struggle with those courses. Wonderful, thank you very much. I'm going to go back to Dr. Santa. I think that you wanted to make a comment a moment ago. So if you did have something you wanted to say, that's great. And then I also have a question um, I'll pose to you. Uh, we have it from Allie. Allie wants to know if we have specific facilities designated for different sciences, for example, a biology lab, a chemistry lab, forensics lab, et cetera. So if you could, in any order you want, answer that question and, and make whatever point you wanted to make, that'd be great. You're on mute. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so I'll tackle this specific question first. Yes, we do have laboratories specifically um, slated or devoted to biology, to chemistry. Um, biochemistry and chemistry currently share. Um, we also share with biotechnology. Biochemistry, the fact that it's interdisciplinary sort of um, can hop around to different places. 
Um, we're building a new science building, um, which is slated to be finished in 2021, but construction is a wee bit on hold. So um, that's probably a tentative date um, of completion now. But there are slated um, several additional laboratories being built there uh, for pharmacology, for biochemistry, for microbiology. Um, and so, yes, in our, our current building, um, applicable to any student who would be entering in the fall or even the next year, there is more than one biology laboratory. There is um, a chemistry laboratory, a forensics laboratory. Um, yes, we have dedicated spaces for both um, laboratory instruction as well as laboratory research. The other question or the other comment I wanted to make was um, to piggyback off of what Dr. Fogel was talking about with our students um, being successful in getting jobs after graduation. And it really does rely a lot um, on internships. And the other thing it relies a lot on too is that Harrisburg University, their spring semester actually starts pretty early in January. And initially students think, oh gosh, I have to go back so quickly. But the thing that it turns out is you actually finish your spring semester early. So we usually finish um, about the third week in April. Whereas most undergraduate uh, programs, especially for their seniors, they're not graduating until you know, mid-May or later. And what I found among <clears throat> all of my students who are job searching um, to start right after graduation, they found that to be a major advantage. Because they graduate so much earlier than every other school, um, they're on the job market with a full developed resume and full set of skills and ready to start jobs before their competition or other students with the same degree, they haven't even graduated yet. And so um, I would just want to um, back up Dr. Fogel when she said that, yeah, our students are really successful getting jobs. And I think attending Harrisburg University also gives an advantage that makes them successful in getting jobs, that getting on the market early. Awesome, thank you. Um, it's a great point to make. I hadn't thought about that. A um, couple more questions. I'm gonna go up three more here. I'm gonna go Dr. Santai, and then I'm going to go to Dr. Jackson and then Dr. Fogel, one more question each. So Dr. Santai, can freshmen take lab classes or is it all lecture, freshman year? Uh, no, freshmen take laboratory classes. Um, as long as you're interested in the sciences, yes, um, we do. Um, it depends on what, what math skills you come in with. Um, we have uh, scientific mind courses that all freshmen take, and there'll be laboratory activities um, that they include. But general biology would definitely be taken in the freshman year, and that's a full uh, laboratory experience. Um, depending upon math skills, they can be taking general chemistry um, across that entire first year that has a laboratory with each uh, semester of it. So yes, there's lots of laboratory opportunities. Um, those are teaching labs. There's also opportunities for really ambitious students to start working and do research in laboratories with faculty. All right, thank you very much. And Dr. Jackson, you mentioned earlier when you were talking about med school about nursing. Now, Harrisburg University does not offer a pre-licensure nursing program, but how could coming to school here for integrative sciences help somebody become a nurse? So if uh, somebody wanted to uh, do a traditional undergraduate program, um, uh, in one of the sciences, uh, that would make it possible that after they graduated, they could go into an accelerated uh, registered nurse program. Um, there are some that are 12 months, most of them are 18 months, and we've had several students uh, from HU do that, finish their uh, degree here at HU and then went into one of these accelerated nursing programs. Okay, that's that's exciting news. I know we get a lot of people that want to be nurses, not something that I could ever see myself doing, but there's people that want to do that. All right, last question is for Dr. Rachel Fogel. Uh, we have a question here uh, that actually came in a little before the webinar. Um, not everyone I think is familiar with what aquaponics is. And that's a big part of what you're responsible for, the aquaponics initiative at Harrisburg University. Could you take just a few minutes to explain what that is and, and maybe uh, why it's a great place for students to, to be and to learn? 
Sure. Um, yes, yeah, so aquaponics is the combination of aquaculture, which is fish farming, and hydroponics, which is um, soilless growing, so using the power of, of water. So um, it's looking at a, a living uh, ecosystem where the fish waste is able to be broken down within the, the system by uh, two different species of bacteria um, to get the nitrogen into a form that the plants are able to up and in that process, they're actually filtering the water so that it's clean to cycle back to the fish. Um, at HU, we have um, two aquaponic systems. One is a research lab setting uh, unveiled within the last year within our student union space at the Whitaker Center, so walking distance from the, the main HU campus. Um, and then we also have a uh, system inside a 3,000 square foot greenhouse at a nearby um, school district. Um, and both of these spaces really provide a lot of hands-on opportunities for students. Uh, we've had uh, internships, uh, graduate level, undergraduate, and high school. Uh, we've had research projects that have been supported internally by our president um, and that hit a range of disciplines. So. Um, you know, obviously you could see the connection to biology or environmental or chemistry, but we also have questions um, being conducted in that space that are pertaining to computer science and advanced manufacturing. Um, so aquaponics for me is, is really cool because it's so interdisciplinary. And even if you don't think you care about plants or you don't think you care about fish, there's a lot of things that you can test in that space that's using other um, discipline specific uh, technologies. All right. Thank you all so much. This was such an informative presentation. I'm sure the folks in our audience enjoyed it as well. Um, with that, we're going to be signing off. Just a reminder to anybody in the audience who wants to see more about forensics, that is Friday at 2 p.m. You can sign up with the link that I presented earlier. You will also receive an email tomorrow or just email us at undergraduate admissions at harrisburgu.edu and we'll get y'all set up. Thank you guys, have a great afternoon and we hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You're welcome, Allie. And you're good.